Hey guys, welcome back to the Romel HD channel. Welcome back to another episode of this Everton career mode on FIFA 23. This is uh this is the the episode before um episode nine because this is a preseason edition and uh yeah we're just gonna cover the preseason games and the community shield. Before we go any further, before we get any deeper into this episode, I'd like to thank you guys for showing love and support for the channel of the last couple of months, especially with the new series. Um, the support for the first season was immense. I'd like to thank you guys for dropping likes, comments in the live chats and um, on playback videos. Also sharing. Some of you guys have said that you shared as well. I appreciate it. And uh, all the people that have followed me on social media like Instagram as well. Definitely appreciate that too. So just to recap what happened last season, we started off really badly in the league and we managed to pull things together towards the end. We got an eighth place finish in the Prem. We also won the FA Cup. We lost 5-1 um, on aggregate in the, in the Carabao Cup as well, semi-finals. And um, yeah, I think we did really good last season. So not to get too deep into Everton's financial situation, but our current budget for this season is 99 million. We started off with 63 million, but the sales, we've, so we've somehow managed to recruit almost 100 million to spend this season. So clearly, someone's been taking uh, some sort of a legal substance on the board because uh, our objectives this season don't make any sense. Um, to basically piggyback of last season, there's no youth development objective. So we, we built up a brand new academy. There's no objective for that. Um, the brand exposure is to just get seven clean sheets in home league matches and sign one veteran player, even though... We're already an age inside and we are trying to move away from that. The board has now decided that we need to sign one veteran player. But that's not an issue because we do need a second choice keeper and already have someone in mind. Continental success. Again, passing out substances in the boardroom is not, it's, it's, it's not good. It's just not good. Continental success. We have to win the Europa League. Um, we just about finished eighth. Um, we struggled to not concede goals, but we have to finish, um, not finish, but win the Europa League. Crazy. Domestic success. So, finish in a Champions League place. So, that means finish top four in the Premier League and uh, win the FA Cup. So, yeah. Yeah, those substances is really, be it's being passed around Goodison Park. I, I really think the higher-ups are doing something crazy. Um, behind the scenes that they're just not telling us about okay i would also like to add that yeri mina has also moved to sevilla for free his contract was uh basically expiring at the end of last season and i let it run out because we had no use for him a will be he's also moved to real betis for 7.6 million so we finally got him off the books giving us an extra spot in the first team for any young future up and coming winger so in terms of this season's tactics we will remain with a 4-3-3 holding formation as our balance formation, as you cycle through the formations, um, we do become a bit more positive. Still holding for attacking, but once we go to four, um, once we go to ultra attacking, sorry, we uh, we go to flat and uh, we obviously push and try to win the ball higher up the field. Um, so yeah, the tactics have remained the same. Nothing has changed. Okay, so from the beginning of season one, this was one of the players that uh, everybody was ranting and raving about. Nico Williams. I thought he had left at Leicester. Cold um bill bow and join another club but he hasn't and uh, he's also available for cheap i would say cheap for his uh, kind of potential so we managed to agree terms with the club uh we want him for about 19.4 million so we're going to go ahead and get this deal over the line So the second player that we're in for, Devon Wrench, he's from Ajax. He can play right back and left back, but we are using, we're going to be using him as a backup right back to Max Ahrens. We've agreed terms with Ajax for 7.6 million. And uh, just like the Nico Williams deal, we're about to go into negotiations and get that over the line as well. Okay, perfect. So now we've got those deals over the line. We are going to quickly take a look at the development of these uh, new signings. So at the moment, his defensive work rate is on medium. So we're going to go ahead and train him up as a wide back. Um, that's going to be addressing uh, uh, his attributes such as crossing, long passing, and um, I think and interceptions. Those are the three main attributes that I do want him to improve on. And uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be targeted uh, as long as he's developing as a wide back. As for Nico Williams, we are going to start off just by converting him into a right winger. At the moment, he's just a right midfielder. 
and uh, we play with wingers. Uh, so we're, yeah, we're gonna train him up as a right winger and then probably deploy him as a playmaker so he can improve on his uh, his uh, vision, his passing, um, long passing. Also, uh, what would happen is is that his skill moves will go up just by one star as well. So Kasper Schmeichel is an option as a second choice goalkeeper. He plays for OG Nice at the moment and I think his contract is expiring at the end of this season. So yeah, we bid between uh, 840k and 1 million. So yeah, we just need OG needs to get back to us and that will just address the veteran the veteran objective, I guess. In my personal opinion, uh, my objective this season is to probably finish, uh, I would say top six, within top six, uh, probably challenge for a trophy. I'm not putting that pressure on myself. Can challenge for the FA Cup again, the Carabao Cup. Um, I don't see us challenging for uh, top four or the league title, but I, I'm definitely, I'm definitely for all the surprises. Um, yeah, just to give you a heads up as well, uh, the size that we are going to be facing off against in terms of the preseason. Um, let's check the calendar. I'm tired of that message popping up now. Uh, so we have FC um, Calder and uh, we have, uh, sorry, I, I forgot the team name. I, I'm, I'm really bad. Sampdoria and we have Hellas Verona. Uh, in our group, we also have Real Betis, Villarreal, uh, Leitim, aka Lazio, and then we have uh, Fiorentino as well. So, uh, those are the teams that we have to compete with to win the European uh, Continental Shield, if that's what it's called. So I would love for you guys to meet the squad. Um, yeah, the squad going into the season, going into pre-season. So yeah, Jordan Pickford is our main keeper, as you already know. Tariq Mitchell's improved. His overall's gone up to 80. Patterson, uh, we are trying to loan him out. He's from the academy. Jovanovic, uh, I don't mind loaning him out, but I also don't mind keeping him. Uh, Tarkovsky, I'm not tying him out but he's not going to be an important centre-back. He's not going to play a pivotal role in the squad. Even though his uh, squad role suggests that he's important, he's not important to me. He doesn't fit my style of play. Uh, we also got a backup uh, right-back for uh, Max Aaron, so we're all covered for the right-back position. Um, Patterson's the third-choice right-back. We are trying to convert him into a right-back instead of having him as a right-wing-back. Uh, let's see how he gets on with that. Uh, Tom Davis, he completed his training to turn into a CDM. We're working on him as a ball winning midfielder just so he can improve defensive attributes. So our nine are Tom Davis and Garner. They're my main choices at the num in the number six role. But just a gay, he's gonna retire, so we're kind of forced to keep him for the final um for the final season for his final season. Sorry, and uh, we also have uh, Alan. We're tying him out. He was close to joining Barcelona, but we just couldn't agree on a fee. I think I asked for way too much, um, according to them at least. Um, Carlos Rodriguez, he's a he's an option as a as a playmaker, Decore, a box of box player. Um, Ali, uh, he can be a hybrid number ten and a box of box. Same with uh, Amiri, but we definitely need to add upon like the box of box role because we did lose Gallagher, and uh, yeah, we do need to find an adequate replacement. In terms of the wingers, uh, the wingers, we are a bit better uh, this season for wingers. Peter Wills still hasn't secured a loan move. Uh, we've also added Nico Williams, so that adds on top of the quality. Uh, Awobi's gone, so the numbers hasn't increased. It's just the quality of the personnel. Uh, McNeil's back from his injury, so he should definitely be up and running for the start of the season and pre-season. Uh, we still have our three strikers, Mope, Calvert-Lewin and Keane, or Ken, sorry. Um, Dominic Calvert-Lewin received an offer from Manchester United. I've, I asked for 60 million minimum, but um, I also asked them to start the negotiations off with 80 million to see um, how far they're willing to go to get their man. And uh, yeah, the negotiations broke down, but I don't think that's the end of it. I think somebody else is gonna come in and they're probably going to put their money where their mouth is. So we have searches going on for technically gifted and physically uh, strong uh, young players around Europe. So yeah, we're scouting in Belgium for three months for a technically gifted player. Uh, same with England, that's going to be three months as well. And we also have a search going on in Wales for a physically strong player. Um, yeah, that's going on for three months too. Speaking of the youth academy, the youth search, we are going to head off into the development centre just to check out who we have in the academy going into pre-season. So Peter Barton, he's a striker. He's 15 years of age, potential 76 to 82. Overall is currently 59. So yeah, we're definitely going to look out for him this season. We're leaving him and keeping him on balance because I feel like his stats are just so lopsided at the moment. His passing is so bad. We need him to address that. We need him to address defending as well. I know he's a striker, but 
we like to defend from the front he needs to have the basics in order to make it in the in the premier league as a first team player so uh, moving on from barton we also signed will bartlett we gave him a professional contract at the beginning of pre-season so yeah his overall is 61 he's 16 years of age we've got him loan listed so he can develop elsewhere um he's not an exciting prospect i think his potential was just up to 78 but we see if the uh, dynamic potential can push him even further so with the casper schmeichel deal where well, we got some good news we got um a response from og nice they agreed to they agreed to the terms of 840k for the goalkeeper we're going to accept that offer we're going to del and no we're not going to delegate actually let's go into the negotiations just so we can set the foundation i want him to to know he's going to be rotational and he's not going to be okay so yeah this is the problem this is the problem this is where we're gonna clash guys finding a goalkeeper is going to be hard pickford is a number one keeper we don't want anyone to trod on the toes of pickford i mean it doesn't hurt to have competition if we played pickford in um in the premier league and Kasper schmeichel in europa league i'm sure i'm sure there shouldn't be an issue so yeah let's go ahead crucial let's see let's see how everything pans out two-year deal he's 36 years of age right now Okay, so we've secured three players already. Two of them, we signed them to long-term deals, five years each. Uh, the other, two years. Uh, we're going to get the best, the most out of their prime. The What's left of them, basically. Um, we do need to, to go on a search for a central midfielder, but we also need someone that's good at set pieces. Either corner, uh, corner kick taken or free kick taken. We need one of the two traits in one of the next signings that we get. So hopefully we can find someone that's a midfielder that can play centrally preferably a box to box player and he can also take free kicks so yeah let's leave that to the scouts and uh, we're gonna get on with our preseason. so match day number one in preseason, let's put on a performance this is a fitness test for both sides everton versus fc cone in the spanish tour and the european continental shield williams jr really a um, flary on the ball wrench plays it in Moise Ken takes it down. Left foot shot. Wide on the post. Some good football so far. It's oof. Scary. Valencia, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And Pitford pulls off a magnificent save. He went with that outside foot um, shot. I think he was aiming for that near post. But Pitford had different ideas. Top quality keeping. Rodriguez. Wrench. Williams, go on Williams, go on Williams, go on Williams, pass it back, Moise Ken, 1-0, uh, 2-0, I'm a, I'm a goal ahead in my head, <laughs> it's 1-0, Moise Ken opens the score in first preseason goal, Kainz, scary, Oh no, oof. Oh, it's 1-1. One, one. It's 1-1. One, one. We should have done better in that situation. We should have got the ball cleared. Um, we should have put bodies in front of the shot as well. Have you just seen it? Mares has gone to Spurs. <laughs> the rid ridiculous signings start from now. Moise Kent. Ball gets cleared. James Garner. Gordon. 1 2 with Deli Ali. Anthony Gordon cuts it back. Shot. Rodriguez 2 1. Williams. Is it in behind? Nice ball. Cavalloon. Shoots. Opposite corner. Opposite. Across the face, I mean. Across the face of the keeper. It's 3 1. And uh, yeah, we look really good in preseason at the moment. Oh, Damari Gray played through on goal, takes a shot, and Horn pulls off a save. Should be burying that if I'm honest with you. Uh, some of these guys, they look match fit. They look really ready for the next campaign. 
Um, like I said, it's only match day one. Let's get into match day two and three and see how the players get on. Okay, here we go. We're in the Santiago burnabout for match day two. We're up against Sampdoria. Sampdoria versus Everton. Here we go. These are the highlights. Watching his movement, able to intercept every pass played into him. Except this one, maybe. Oh, we almost scored a spectacular. Mary with the ball over the top. Mope with the acrobatic. Just goes wide on the post. Look at that. Really close to lighting up the preseason tournament. Nico Williams. Mary plays it into the gap. Nico Williams receives the ball back. Cuts it back into Calvert-Lewin. Instantly, those two substitutions have almost caused issues for Sampdoria. Look at this. Nice little cut back. Shoots, aims for the near post, the bottom corner. And Odero is alert again. Is it forward? Nico Williams. Is on the inside. There's uh, Tom Davis. Kunku. The core eight dinks over the top. Cavaluin makes it 1-0. We finally got the opener in match day two. Sampdoria have been really, really um, negative. They've sat back and have allowed us to play with the ball. And in that moment, they allowed us to play a bit too much. That nice run in behind from Cavaluin. Cute dink over the top from uh, the core eight. And he is volleyed home. Volleyed home. Look at this. Perfect connection. Catches it just right. Odero finally beaten. Aarons to Tolkowski. Kunku gives the ball away. Typical. Typical. He's had a shock in preseason so far in Kunku. Um, we definitely need to go in for a left back. I already have one in mind. You guys already are familiar with him from FIFA 22. So yeah, we're definitely um, going to surprise you in the menu with this familiar face. Nico Williams. Max Aarons, Decore, got some backup, and Kunku back into Decore. Deli Ali, great. Aarons, really patient inside the penalty area. Oh, just over the bar, unlucky Williams. Couldn't get the ball out of his feet, but he made the most out of that opportunity. Still 1 0. A victory on match day two. That's six points on the table for us. We're looking really good in this tour. On this tour, I should say. Fantastic display from my players defensively. Going forward, we controlled the game. And uh, like I said, at the end of the last match, everybody looks raring to go for the season. We've got one more uh, preseason game coming up next. So we have a new target for the channel, which is 500 subscribers. So please remember to subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content and if you're new. Also, if you can kindly hit that notification bell just so you're notified when I'm about to upload. Okay, so now that you've done that, let's get back to the video. So match day three of this preseason tournament, the final game. Hellas Verona, they'll be entertaining us. Everton, we're off the back of two victories in this group. Let's make it three and three. Let's see if we can uh, repeat the same quality of the corner. We hit the hit the sign net and this time with the same player, Michael Keane. It remains 0-0. Oh, no. Oh, no. Nice save there by Schmeichel. We opened up the space for the player to run into. Barak. Illich. Doig. Barak. Henry. Barak. Oh, well done, Godfrey Barak turns, shoots. Wide, really wide. Their shooting boots are definitely left back in Italy because that was terrible. Didn't wrap his foot around it the way he was supposed to. Maintaining possession, step overs. Almost costing possession for the team. Williams in behind. Nico Williams. Nico Williams, I tried to swear it to Gordon. I tried to, just didn't work out. Again, what Fort Williams was. I was hesitant to take the shot. The attack is still alive. Mope over the top. Oh, Gordon. That would have been a fantastic team goal. Gordon just wide on the post. Nice dink over the top by Mope. Should really be tucking that away. Going to try play out from danger. 
do that successfully. On the other end, we look like we're going to score. There's Gordon. Oh, save from Montepo. Save from Montepo. Ongla into Henry to Barak. Barak. Nice block there. Oh, caught in possession again. Oh, what is going on? Why did Keane take the ball just to do that? Hellas Verona has taken the lead. I swear, if we lose to that, it's going to be a disappointing end to the tour. What's, what's Keane doing, man? Hellas Verona, against the run of play, have ended up getting the victory. They, they've won 1 0 from a say world goal. We wasted a lot of chances. Uh, we definitely need to work on that. Uh, the next game, we have the community shield against Manchester City. If we defend and attack anything like we have in this game, we're going to be in big trouble. For further updates outside of the channel, please be sure to follow me on Instagram at RomelHD so you get further updates such as me premiering a video, if I'm recording a video or making new content, and also when I'm about to upload. So follow me on Instagram at RomelHD. Okay, so we're in the pre-match press conference uh, for the Community Shield game between Manchester City and us, Everton. And uh, yeah, we're going to answer some questions. So uh, people are asking um, whether Gordon is on his way out. He didn't have the best preseason, but I don't think he was terrible. He did um, he did con <clears throat> contribute here and there. Sorry, um, address a gate. Um, he's someone at the moment that we have to use anyway. Um, I did want to move him on. To recoup some money back but i doubt anyone's going to bid for someone that's retiring at the end of the season and um i think they're going to ask you about manchester city now so what am i hoping from from the boys from the lads we just need to bring a good mentality a winning mentality a strong mentality going up against one of the best sides in europe premier league champions and uh yeah i think we can definitely cause an upset on our day So, we're live at Wembley Stadium for this Community Shield encounter between Everton and Manchester City, the Premier League champions versus the FA Cup champions. Here we go. Curtain raiser. It's a big test for my players. Some people consider this as an extension to the preseason tour. For me, this is the real deal for us. This, this kind of determines what kind of mentality we're going to have going into this new season. We still have our top marksman, Calvert-Lewin, as one of our players. Only United have come in for him. He had a really strong squad, City. Definitely built up on it. They've got De Jong, I can see. So today at Wembley, this is how we are going to start. We have Jordan Pickford and Go at the back. We have Aarons, Keane, Godfrey and Mitchell. In the middle, we have Onana, Ali and Decore. On the right, we have McNeil. Down the middle, we have Calvert-Lewin. And on the left... We have Gordon. We are not starting Williams. He is not fit for this game. So Manchester City, they have Edison in goal. Lewis, Akanji, Stones and Cancelo at the back. In the middle, they have Rodri, De Jong and De Bruyne. Uh, they have uh, Morgan Rogers on the right-hand side. Uh, Haaland down the middle and Jack Grealish on the left. Really strong side. No wonder why they won the league. We are under some pressure for this game. We are definitely the underdogs. The game's kicked off. We're attacking to the right. City are attacking to the left. Curtain raise up. It's definitely important for us. We are the smaller side. Did really well to end that long drought. Or silverware for Everton. And we continue that with a Community Shield trophy at the start of the season. Gordon plays the ball into the box. It's cleared up by Cancelo. Gordon, well done, nice overlapping run from Mitchell. Makaya back, Calvert-Lewin shot is blocked by Kanji. Okore from a tight angle. He bangs it in. He bangs it in. What a cracker. What a cracker. Abdullah Okore from the left-hand side of the penalty area has curled one in into the opposite corner of Edison. We have taken the lead in such style, such fashion. Look at this. One last look at that. Boom. Leaves his boot. Edison just doesn't know what was coming at him. It's 
to Everton. The play out from the back, as usual. Corey. Gordon back into the Corey. Mitchell. Really patient in our build up. Onana switches play to the right hand side. McNeil. Oh, Max Ahrens was looking to overlap on the inside. His first touch let him down. City can uh, have the ball now. Go forward with it. There's Rogers. Orland. De Jong. Lewis into Rogers. Back into Lewis. De Jong. Lewis running down this uh, right hand side and uh, the communication between him and Rogers not good enough as we intervene down that left hand side. Orland. Losing that battle between him and Keane so far, I must add. I'm going to be cocky. I can turn something. Out of nothing. And there we go. Manchester City have equalised. What a dodgy way to concede a goal. Frankie De Jong just runs to the byline. Just smashes it in. Uh, it's 1-1. One, one. One up. Crossed in. Cleared away. The Harlem fails to get proper connection on it. Doesn't go as far as Rogers. Rodri on the ball now. Rogers. We should be doing better. Should have won the ball back by now. Young. Really need to be hovering around and charging into them, and it's 2 1. It's 2 1. The Bruyne just makes it look really easy, puts it into the top corner. And Pickford doesn't stand a chance. A lot of ball watching. My players have definitely dropped off in their performance in this first half. But um, Manchester City, like I said, they are the best side in the world at the minute. And when they're playing like this, it's really difficult to stop them. McNeil. Calvert-Lewin into Deli Ali. Plays it over the top. Calvert-Lewin. Calvert-Lewin. Denied by Edison. Finishing is just not his thing. It's just not one of his uh, good traits in today's game. Calvert-Lewin really wasted this opportunity to get us back in the game. Second half is underway. See how the team that get it started. We're attacking to the left. They're attacking to the right. Sure, they're going to come, come forward straight away. They've always got bad intentions. <laughs> Nothing's ever friendly with Manchester City. That's why this means a lot for us. Test out our mentality. City don't play around. City don't play around. Cancelo misses a great opportunity. Zonana. Calvert-Lewin. Gordon. There's a Kanji chasing him. Plays into Calvert-Lewin. Turns his back to the defender. Takes a shot. Wide on the post again. So our first change, Damaru Gray is replacing Dwight McNeil. Shocking performance on the right-hand side from the English winger. And um, yeah, his uh, starting, starting um, position in the side is definitely up for questioning at the moment. Eco Williams is in good form. Damaru Gray had a really strong end to the previous campaign. And Dwight McNeil's only just coming back from injury, so... Definitely going to be a, a hit on his confidence. Oh. De Jong. Wrong goal. Frankie De Jong dinks the keeper. Bob Jaranko is 3 1 to City. Frankie De Jong with his brace. And uh, yeah, it's getting really embarrassing out there. Defensively, we're not doing enough. But defensively, what can we do to tame this side? All guns blazing it is with Pep Guardiola and his team. Deli Ali 
Plays the ball in behind. Calvert-Lewin again. Denied by Edison. He's just giving away a penalty. Michael Keane has just conceded a penalty in the stupidest way ever. Grealish, you definitely die for that. Look at this. It's perfect from Grealish. Such a such a clown. What a twat. How can you go down so easy? Man up, man. Man City have a penalty. This is just ridiculous now. They're about to embarrass us. Holland to make this four. Holland up against Pickford. It's 4-1. Gets even worse for the poor, for the boys. I feel sorry for them. I really feel sorry for them. We just don't have the financial backing to compete like this. Not on this level. And he does his little dance. This is a reality check. Definitely a reality check. Four minutes added on. Bill Foden travelling down this right hand side. I mean, how are we supposed to compete with this? This is just incredible. This is incredible movement from Man City. On and off the ball. This incredible. Nice save from Pickford. City fans are really loud. Anticipating another Community Shield trophy to add to their cabinet. We're lacking that thrust. Yep. No, let's just keep it respectable. Let's keep it as low as 4-1. Get this ball cleared. And there we have it. Manchester City. They've won at Wembley. This curtain raiser. We look like the positive side at the beginning. But get Manchester City warmed up and then you'll find out what they're capable of. Clinical isn't even the word for it to describe what we've just witnessed. So Manchester City are now the winners of the Community Shield. We've done really well to even uh, get into the Community Shield final. We won their FA Cup. We put up a fight at the beginning. It just wasn't enough. And Kevin De Bruyne can lift up the Shield. See, are this season's champions. Video. Um, this has been quite enjoyable to like recording it. Uh, it's the first time I've actually enjoyed playing preseason. I, I think it's an improvement from last year because they forced you to play like five games. I think three is enough. And um, it's given me some time to figure out who's the weak links in the side, who's good enough to, um, to feature heavily next season. Obviously, some players need to get the cobwebs out. Uh, Preseason isn't like um, do or, it's def it's not like a set in stone thing you're forming preseason. But like I said, this is definitely a template just to know who fits the system and who doesn't. The new signings they've they've played well. Nico Williams, I like him. I like uh, Devin Wrench. I also like Kasper Schmeichel as a backup keeper. Like I said um, at the beginning of the video, we definitely need to get a central midfielder. We definitely need a left back as well for Tariq Mitchell because uh, whenever he gets tired, uh, we do need someone that's adequate enough to give us um, that recovery pace at the back and that uh, good ability going forward. So yeah, let's just hope by the next video, uh, we have our targets. We are searching. We are searching away. Like I said, we are looking for someone that can cross and take free kicks as well. So, yep, just give us time. Give us time. Our budget, uh, let's check our budget. We still have a good amount of money left. 68 million in the market. Don't want to spend all of it because we still have January to come. And we do want enough money left over for next season. Just to recap, pre-season, we won 3-1 against FC Cone. Uh, we also won one 0 against Sampdoria. We beat, beat Hellas for uh, we lost to Hellas Verona, sorry, uh, and then we also capped this episode off with a defeat in the Community Shield against Manchester City. Uh, so for the next episode, we are going to kick off against Leicester City. We also have Watford away from home, and then we we're going to cap off the episode again with a game against Manchester City. Hopefully, this time is not going to be an embarrassing scoreline. Then we have that deadline day at the very end. Of the video okay so our signings so far schmeichel uh, for 840k from og nice ajax we uh we went to ajax for devon wrench at the right back we signed up for 7.6 million eco williams we signed up for 19.4 million from atlet bilbao players that have left so dobbin he's gone out on loan to copenhagen uh Bramf white he's gone to fc porto uh, on loan wills he's gone to genk on loan as well. Broadhead, we, uh, we sold him to Anderlecht for 1.8 million. 
Uh, Angel Gomez, we sold him to Sheffield United for 4.9 million. Astley, he's gone to Spezia on loan. Oyango, he's gone to Viborg um, FF for 1.5 million. For 1.15, sorry, million. Um, Gabamin, we sold him for 4.55 million to uh, Wolverhampton. So, yeah, those are all the deals from us. In terms of like the big sides elsewhere, um, 111 million move for Valverde to Juventus. Osmehan's left Napoli, gone to West Ham for 83 million. Militao's also joined Valverde at Juventus, 73 million. That how, that's how much it cost for his signature. kamavinga has gone to Leverkusen. So Real Madrid is really being raided at the moment. Verratti, he's gone to our rivals. He's uh, gone to our noisy neighbours, Liverpool, 66 million. A lot of money for a 30-year-old. Um, uh, Lo Normand. I think I said that correctly. Hopefully I did. 64 million to Leverkusen for Keita Milan for 60 million. So Kunha, he's gone to Bayern Munich as well as Abraham. Both of those deals cost around 57 million. Uh, Mares, like we said at the beginning of the video, he's gone to Spurs. And uh, yeah, I think I'm done there. We're going to be reading this list for time. For time. Oh, Tommy yassi has gone to Liverpool. So Arsenal have, have weakened. Yeah, this season's going to be even tougher because the, the quality of signings the quality of the players we bought in they're not players that are here for the now that they're not ready now now they are basically future players with potential eco williams he's still got some ground to make up for um definitely wrench he's not at the level of uh, being a right back in the premier league starting week in week out his overall is only 75 the only player that's solidified is casper schmeichel and uh pitford is better than him so we haven't got anyone that's ready to push in the first team just yet i think that's going to come in the next episode the next two players we sign they definitely need to be like benchmark starters definitely starting like they need to improve the immediate squad but yeah that's it for today's episode i hope you have enjoyed it if you have please remember to smash that like button also sub to the channel if you're new um also uh, follow me on instagram at ramel hd i have a second channel ramel hd plays go over there and subscribe when i'm ready to play like rpg games story based games i'll be streaming on there and upload uploading videos so uh ramel hd plays that will be in the link in the description below also hit the notification bell so you're notified when i go live premiere a video and also um yeah if i've uploaded a video uh, but yeah that's it for today's episode hope you guys have enjoyed it see you in episode 9 for the start of the campaign take care for now peace